All right, thank you very much. I'm starting the class right away. Um, but before I go to the class, I will want to make this correction. Which I noticed in the last assignment I gave to you. Majority of you, you feel in the perspective of the methodological approach to the question. You understand the question I gave to you, but you fail to answer the question based on its method, which is not too good. I ask you to outline, please, this is our department. And there are some things you need to understand when it comes to how to answer a question. If I ask you to outline, I don't ask you to just merely state the point for me. I expect you to state and explain the points. You are going to write external exam when you get to SS3. So you must accustom yourself to the rudiments on how to answer question, please. Please take note of that. Then there are some of you here that you don't do my assignment. You know yourself. You know yourself. About one of them, Grace. You, you do my assignment whenever you like. Okay? Taylor is not here now. Taylor is one of them. So please help yourself. You are not helping me. The assignment is a means of getting feedback from you and device a means to correct individual's uh, challenge or problem. So please I appeal to all of you to make sure that you do the needful. And aside that, whenever I publish the results and a copy is being sent to your email, don't just look at the results alone. Under the mark you score, you receive view. Click on view to check the reason you scored that mark. You see my comments, that could be my correction there. In order for you not to fall a victim of that same problem. But what I have noticed is that there are some of you, you keep on repeating the same thing every time. What you did that was wrong before, that is the same thing you see give back to me. Rooney, you are among, of, you are among them. Yes, I decided to say this because I'm not satisfied that I have corrected something. Somebody will still do the same thing. So don't just check the results in the email sent to you. Click on view to go to the site and check the details. It is important in order for you not to make the same mistake. All right, thank you. Who is this person sleeping? See Joshua. What's wrong with you? Joshua. <laughs> hey, Jesus Christ. Okay. Today we are looking at a new topic away from courtesy now. Be looking at a topic titled Law and Order. Okay, it's an interesting topic, and under the topic, we we'll have the following learning objectives definition of law and order, features or characteristics of society as between law and order and importance of law and order. 
though we may not achieve all the objectives today, but I hope that we achieve number one and two. Why the last objective will be postponed to Friday. Now, this topic, I don't believe that it's going to be a difficult or a lane as in a kind of a, something you have not come across before. Before now, I have taught you different types of uh, law or constitution. And I have told, I told you, I remember I told you then that when I was teaching constitution that constitution is synonymous to law. And when we say order, the order in this sense is not a verb, it's a noun. So, our major agenda here, we want to know what law is and what orderliness is. What will now be the relationship between orderliness and law? Which one affects order? These are the things we are going to look at. I know that to refresh our brain. Of course, remember that in your home, your different homes, there are certain guiding principles in your various uh, house there. And you find out that if there are no rules and regulations that govern the house, some of you will take the law into your hand. Some of you decide to do something that is contrary. Going away from home, there are some of you that uh, you are Christians, if you have studied your Bible very well at the time that attend your Sunday school, you find out that when God brought out the Israelite, Israelite out of uh, Egyptian bondage, in order to prevent anki panki, radness, chaos among them, God decided to give them the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments actually is not because of God to ensure peaceful coexistence among them. And as I said, the Ten Commandments, there were a series of ordinances given by God to govern the affairs of the Israelites. Why? The sense of all this is to ensure peaceful coexistence, whereby the Mighty One would not impose their strength on the, those that are weak, whereby the, that such will lead to a kind of uh, anarchy. Now, having understood the benchmark of what I call law and how the rules and regulation in your various home helps to ensure tranquility and decorum, I want to get response from you. What is law? What is orderliness? And what is their relationship? Yes. If you have answer to my question, raise your hand. If you don't raise your hand, I will call. Time for you to talk. What is law? What is orderliness? What's the relationship between law and orderly? orderliness? I mean. Yes, Joshua. Joshua is raising his hand, the man that is sleeping. Yes, Joshua. So, um, these are regulations that are being declared to or not to govern a particular place or society. Okay. Why orderliness is the state? No, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Somebody will tell me orderliness. He said laws are set of rules and regulations that govern a society. It could be a society, it could be an organization, it could be any association occupied by human beings. Okay. That is the law. Thank you very much for that. Yes, who is telling me what orderliness is? Hola, you okay? 
what is orderliness? Well, I'm okay, I'm with you. Is it your network? Rooney, you are excited. I follow like Moke already. Divine, you are excited. I follow like Moke. Like Moke, do you decide to mute yourself when I have uh, muted you? Some of you have not been seeing anything in my class. You mute yourself, right? Okay, no problem. No problem. Okay, let me listen to my listening to here. Rooney, let me listen to Rooney. What is orderliness? So, orderliness is like um, whereby things are organized or arranged in a sensible manner. Thank you very much, Rooney. Oh, uh, Timidire, I received your message. So, orderliness is the state of being where everything is at peace and where there is no chaos. Okay, thank you very much. Two of you are seen online. Thank you very much. Uh, this is on what the two have said. I think they have actually what give me insight of to what I actually asked from them. Turing said, orderliness is a situation by things uh, well arranged in an organized manner. Meaning that they are not, things are not uh, disorganized. For instance, in your house, if you want to eat with your dad, maybe you want to eat ever. Cause demand that your father wash his hand first, right? Then you wash your own hands. Cause demand that when your father dip his hand into the plate, you observe. When you remove his hand, you put your own hand. Am I saying the truth? Okay. Okay. Because if you put your hands. At the same time with him, you don't maybe where you want to pick a particular meat or fish. That is where you are going to put it. There will be so as in this orderliness. So, so orderliness can come as a result of customs and norms that have been observed in the society. It could be as a result of the observance of the law that govern the society. Okay, every association of human being deserve orderliness. And just as uh, Timidri said, where there is no chaos, you should know that there's orderliness there. Where things are done in the right manner, you should know that there's orderliness there. Uh, thank you. Uh, that shows that uh, you have, you, 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 you actually understand something based on what we are going to do today. Now, I'm going to show you some things here. For you to understand better. Hmm? As I had, I say, law is the entire body of rules and regulations that govern the affairs of the people in the society. Just as uh, 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 Joshua said, okay, orderliness, on the other hand, is should be aware that things are organized or arranged in a sensible manner or in accordance with the law, customs, norms, and or convention of the society. I said it the right time that uh, when we talk, when we're talking of orderliness, orderliness is necessary to be a product of the law alone. It can be a result of the custom, just as I've said. Custom demand, tradition demand that you respect others. If you don't do that, there will be chaos. Okay. And it could be a result of certain convention. When I say convention, general agreement reached by the people in order for certain things to be done, in order to prevent a chaos. And it could be a result of certain laws that when you disobey, you get punished for it. Okay, so that is orderliness. And you, I, I was not asking a question then that, what is the relationship between law and orderliness? Yes, let me get a response from, uh, before I forge ahead here. Let me hear from my daughter here, Jessica. 
what is the relationship between I cannot hear you. I said what is the relationship between it's like your network is breaking. What is the relationship between law and other ladies? No, that is you are making a noise there. No, that this is not working. Try this. Okay. Uh, um, okay, please work on your network. Okay, Temidre uh, said the relationship is that when there's law in the society, there will be orderliness. Yes, Temidre, you have the idea, but I'm not satisfied. Understand? Does it mean that there's no law in Nigeria? Do we actually have orderliness in all life? Yes. You have not answered the question critically. We have law in Nigeria, but orderliness has not been observed in many cases. Why? What is the relationship between law and orderliness? Where is divine here? Yes, divine. Tell me, what is the relationship between orderliness, uh, between law and orderliness? I know you're autistic. I said, what oh, relationship between um, law and orderliness? I guess uh, when there is like implementation of law, it's going to be like orderliness, not to things, but like okay, okay. discipline. I'll pick what I want to build from your statement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank you very much. I'll pick what I want to build from you. When there is implementation of the law, that is when there is appropriate strict adherence to the provisions of the law, there will be orderliness. That's the relationship. You can hear that. Not just law. There will be law. People may not obey it. If people don't obey the law, people don't try as much as possible to ensure that there's appropriate implementation of the law, there will still be chaos. There will still be anarchy. I was listening to news, was it today, that government was complaining that uh, people are not observing the, the setting guidelines put in place in order to stop uh, the spread of COVID-19. But do you know that we have put the guidelines in place? What happened? People disobey the guidelines. Even the people that actually put the guidelines in place, they are the ones disobeying it. I'm talking the government in this time around. You see the people in government are supposed to lead by example. You see them, they'll be the first set of people to disobey the law. Sometimes ago, uh, somebody they come to another party, see the crowd. Yet they will tell the subject or the followers that uh, you should obtain, you should serve social distance, you should do this, you do that. Whereas they are the ones that constitute the authority. That's been our next topic, constitute authority. That the council authority that put the guidelines or the rules and regulation in place, but they were there. So also the people that what that disobey it. So it's not about putting the rules and regulation in place. It's about strict adherence to the provisions of the law that have been put in place. When these are strictly observed, then we are talking about uh, orderliness. So we are going to observe orderliness in the society. That's the relationship. Okay. Emily, I believe you are with me. Now, now, if you look at a picture here, this, 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 this is during an election. And if you look at the image very well, you see a former governor in that place. Okay, I will not mention his name so that I will not, I will not be campaigning or trying to make somebody popular. And I will not omit you so that you not mention anybody's name. Okay, as a matter of fact, the former governor is supposed to decide that I'm supposed to vote first. But because of the fact that he is aware of the provisions of the law. <laughs> okay, Rony, thank you. I will not read your message. <laughs> okay, haven't understood the provision of the of the law that you queue up either you when you are at the ATM or when you want to cast your vote in any public gathering in order to prevent chaos. You see the people queue queue up. Nobody said that I'm 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 stronger than you. Hmm? I'm stronger than you. I have to do. This, I have to do that before you. People kill up, even the governor himself kill up in order for him to cast his vote. In that case, when you see the governor kill up like this and you are coming, you think that you are mighty, common sense will tell you that, uh, can't you see the governor on the queue? Let me go back to what? To the right place and queue up. That was why I was saying about the rules and regulations that are governed the prevention of COVID-19. If our leaders lead by example. I'm sure 
the citizens will follow suit at the same time that is not a criteria for me for you know to what obey the guiding principles okay that's not the criteria for you to obey the guiding principles after us in israel in israel we have a bad king like ahab but then we still have a good man of god called elijah elijah did not because the king number one person in israel disobeyed and decided to do contrary to the will of god so do what is needful don't follow the multitude to commit an evil. Of course, whatever we are saying, any law put in place is not because of anybody, because of us to give a kind of society where everybody will live in peace. If COVID 19 is out of Nigeria or out of Africa or put an end to the world, they will, all of us will go back to our normal cultural and uh, social gathering. We will to facilitate together. So please let us learn how to obey rules and regulation in order to ensure orderliness. So, when there's no orderliness, what happens? Late commas. I'm looking at them, okay? Those of you that have switched off your picture, you are now with me. Grace. Where there's no observance to the law, why there's noise there? I believe you had my question. There'll be chaos. There'll be chaos. There'll be chaos. Okay. And you can see where there's chaos. The, 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 the consequences, all the consequences may not come to the person that caused it. And it may come to the person that causes it. That is why we all must try all our possible possible best to ensure law and order in the society. Now, aside this, aside this, please may I ask this question? What do you think? What do you think will be the characteristic eh, of a society? What do you think you can see in this society? And you say that society is exhibiting law and order. If you know, if you have answered my question, you raise your hand. What can you see in a society? And you can boldly say that yes, there's law and order, right? Or there's orderliness in the society. Saddam. Um, absence of civil critic or wars. I'm sorry. Absence of civil strife or wars is the future of social of the country not having of ex, of the country exhibiting law and order. Not only the country of a society exhibiting law and order. Thank you. Yeah. Where there is none war where there's no civil strife like uh mr manuel is fighting jessica jessica is fighting taylor taylor is fighting Rooney. Hmm? in that society we we'll say there's law and order okay where there's no war there's no civil strife there's no anky punky then we're talking about law and order let me do it They will be united. Unity. Unity in the country. Unity. Okay. In a society as between law and order, unity or purpose will be one of the characteristics. You see that if divine say yes, Rooney will say yes, they will all agree on a common purpose or objective to achieve. Okay. Jessica, you raise your hand. Jessica, are you with me? So they were already said what I wanted to say. Uh -uh, that, I, that, I, uh, that means you have not, you are not used to this environment that is characterized by law and order. Hmm? They should have. They, there are many. There are many. There are many of that. There will be decorum, according to Rooney. Rooney said there will be decorum. Thank you, Rooney. 
okay? In a society where there is law and order, when I say dec when, when we say decorum, people don't talk in a rowdy manner, okay? You will wait for another person. When I'm talking, you will wait. When I'm done, you will express your opinion. Unlike a society where there's no law and order, anybody, if I'm talking, Grace will be talking, Dimitri will be talking, Divine will be talking, and in that perspective, there will be roundness. There will not be orderliness, okay? Chris said there's peaceful coexistence and general sense of security. Thank you. Thank you. People in a society that has bit law and order live in unity. There's peace, relative peace in the society where people, you, 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 you can go out at any time, you can come in, you can leave your car outside, nobody will remove the brain bus. <laughs> but you gonna try that in your environment before you know. <laughs> okay? So, uh, so what you have said, somebody said there will be, according to what is your name, Saddam, the absence of civil strife or war, that one has been said, and I have explained that, how that comes to being. Somebody agreed, just said it, that there's going to be peaceful coexistence. People live in peace. You know, when you respect me and I respect you, you follow the rules and regulations of the society, there won't be a problem. But if I disrespect you, you will one way or the other disrespect me, and I may want to assert my own authority over you. In trying to do that, that may lead to a kind of a problem, okay? That may lead to a kind of a problem. That is why in a society as big law and order, there is a, what we call peaceful coexistence. Because everybody do the right thing. When everybody do the right thing in a society, yeah, there will be peaceful coexistence. When everybody does the right thing, there will be peaceful co existence then there is what called due process or justice jessica read your message hmm? you know when it's time for me to talk i don't tolerate message from people i give you opportunity so when it's for my own time hmm? i take my own position okay due process or justice is observed when i say due process everything the activities of the government in the state or the society that uh, observe law and order, everything is done in line with the provisions of the law. The process, I think I taught you rule of law. And I, stay, I, I told you then that uh, the due process of the law is synonymous to what? Rule of law. When actions and activities of government are being carried out in line with the provisions of the guiding principles that follow the affairs of the state, then there's due process. And there's, when we say justice, when there is a case and justice is being meted out in line with the provisions of the constitution without any form of bias treatment, then we talk about what justice and there's law and order in that society. It's not a society where somebody that is guilty will be given what? Freedom. It's not a society where criminals will be roaming the society, why those that have not committed offense will be in the bar. In, in, in the bar. Okay, that is a character of society is between law and order. Then there's transparency, accountability, and probity in the government of a state is between law and order. When I say transparency, the activities of government is open to all. It's open for questioning. And the government from time to time give account of what it has done to the people. There's nothing that is done in secrecy. The press will not want to get information about the activities of government and the particular government officials will don't want to give such information. Since there's not anything that has been done contrary to the provisions of the law, the government will be open to all to see what is going on, what is happening at a particular time. From time to time, they will tell the public, they will tell the citizen, this is what we get, this is what we have spent, okay? Then, Government can also ask questions. If you think they don't understand anything, you are free to what? To ask questions. Okay. Transparency is a, one of the attributes of a society as between law and order. But in a society where government is not accountable to the people and activities of government are being done in secrecy and God, people are not 
in the right position to question the actions of the government, then that society is known as beating law and order. On a close to it here, we have elections are conducted in a peaceful manner. Okay. In the society is beating law and order. There's peaceful conduct of election. The elections are what free, fair, and credible. In the society is beating law and order, the elections are conducted in a free, fair, and credible manner. Elections are not rigged. Talks are not used by politicians to rig election. I think with this, what I have said now, you will try to ask your question about the state of the nation. Okay? I know you are, you are not too young to know what is happening in the country. And we are teaching all these things as citizens of the country in order for you to know the reason you have to strive in your locality. And by the time you grow, you graduate, you find yourself in the social cycle, how to ensure that all these characteristics are what? At display the society. Don't look at what is happening now. Your generation can change the country positively. Yes, your generation can change the country positively. Thank you. Then, in continuation of this, there are others. There's equity and fairness. You can see the balance I showed there. If I am to treat uh, Olajimoke and define on a particular matter, both of them will be put on the same scale. I'm going to treat them what? Equally. I will not because Olajimoke is a female, yes, uh, maybe I want, to, I want to try to date her. I will treat Olajimoke specially, and I will deal with the fine anyhow. Of course, you, you, this, these are some of the things that is causing problems in the society. Where, uh, I think you will have heard about nepotism, favoritism, and tribalism. Hmm? What I have just said is in the angle of nepotism. Because of my personal interests, I will deny some people fair treatments. And I give undue favor to some people who does not deserve it. There's no fairness in that. Where that, where there's no fairness, where there's no equity, where people are not treated in fair manner, that society is not observing what law and order. And as a matter of fact, when there's no equity and fairness, if I have treated divine negatively and treated like Moke in a very uh, special manner. Divine can decide to seek for another means to deal with me. And in that case, there'll be chaos, there'll be problem in society. This, we have it, all this kind of misdemeanor, kind of bad behaviors exhibited by some people in the society we are. We don't want you to exhibit it. That is why we are teaching you this. Ensure you observe Equity, fairness, treat everybody fairly, whatever you are, any position you find yourself. Don't tribalize anybody. Do not showcase nepotism. Do not show favoritism. It is bad. It's a, it's a sin against humanity and against God. I think you have heard that. And I'm sure you are learning. Oppositions are tolerated in the States. In a state that is exhibiting law and order, there, you know, of course, I've taught you democracy. And I made it known to you that one of the characteristics of a democratic system is that there's presence of opposition. As a matter of fact, if you don't have anybody opposing at that, you know, the best will not come out of you. The best will come out of you when you have somebody that is opposing you because your enemy will always see the area you have not done very well. And when your enemies say those areas you have not done very well, what do you do? You correct it so that you don't give them anything to say next time. And by the time you correct that, what are you doing? You are improving on yourself. But that has been the negative aspect of the democratic practices in this part of the world. We engage the government, in most cases, kick against what? Opposition. It take your enemy to give. Your friend, in most cases, will not tell you the area you have not done it very well. Yes, because he wouldn't want to offend you. But opposition will tell you. The enemy will use it against you. Then what do you do? You correct it. By the time you correct it, you have gone above that level. You become what? A better person. So in a society that is a bit law and order, oppositions are tolerated, 
oppositions are not being what clamped down with uh, with, the, with the state uh, apparatus. I believe I'm communicating. There's decorum. Somebody has said it right time. If you see the scene here, the National Assembly, you see that everybody is talking at the same time. That is not decorum. Hmm? In a decorum, irrespective of the situation, you must behave in an orderly manner. Irrespective of the situation, you must behave in an orderly manner. You say your you respect your opinion one after the other. Not that this one is talking, this one is talking, everybody is talking at the same time. You will not hear what I'm saying, I will not hear what you are saying. Okay. The quorum must be exercised. It is important at home, in the school, in an association of human being, you must exercise the quorum. It is, it is very paramount. The citizen queue up in orderly manner in any public gathering, e.g., during election or at ATM stand. You can see the picture that I have here. I don't want to say something here in respect of our society. In a society that is with law and order, during election, just as I've shown you in the previous analysis, people queue up. When you want to withdraw money, people queue up. You don't you, you don't jump the queue. You don't just scatter yourself. Okay, it shows when you are passing through that environment. You know that there's what there's orderliness in this place. I don't need to talk more about that. Obedient to traffic rules and regulations. Okay. Okay, this is one of the challenge, challenges we are facing in this part of the world. This is one of the challenges we are facing in this part of the world. You see the graphic uh, design I have here. That is pedestrian crossing. You will have been taught that in your GSS. You will be taught in uh, SS2 under traffic regulation. When a pedestrian puts his leg or her leg eh, on the lane where we have the line, other zebra cross, anything you call it, crossing, all the vehicle words will stop. And close to that, you will see the sign before. As a driver, when you are coming, you will see the sign showing that pedestrian crossing. So when you are approaching such area, you must not come with on a high speed. So when you see pedestrian trying to cross, you must slow down, allow the pedestrian to cross. But the reverse is the case in this part of the world. If you think that the driver in Nigeria will wait for you, why you want to cross, pedestrian, uh, cross in, a, in a zebra crossing? You will go and collect your ticket in heaven. That's just the situation here. That is it. Because you will not wait to come and you will not wait to collect to go and complain. They will cross the person. So even when we have zebra crossing, we still run. Where there's no pedestrian bridge. For us to cross in a pedestrian cross in, in a zebra crossing like this, where it has been shown that pedestrian crossing, you will still run. Because if you don't run, those drivers they don't care. They don't observe the traffic regulation. So that tells us that in that case now. There's no orderliness. There's no law and order. Somebody will see that there is a sign that there's a hill ahead. Slow down. Or men at work. They will see no slow down. Somebody will say, do not cross. Eh? Make use of the pedest uh, pedestrian bridge. They will still cross. Hmm? Some, some people are closing their eyes so, because they know that they do it. They will not pass through the pedestrian bridge. Anyway, I will not blame some of these Nigerians. You stand. I will not blame because so many things constitute the fact that the majority of Nigerians don't use some of these pedestrian bridges. Some of these pedestrian bridges, that is where they commit crime. Yes. We have seen a somebody before whereby somebody passing through pedestrian bridge where there's no light at night and some guys have been what? Locked down there. Rape the lady. This pedestrian video at the same time serve as a home for destitutes. We don't have destitute home. I don't want to mention some pedestrian bridges now. When you are passing them, you will see different destitutes lying down, sleeping. 
see different sorts of rubbish there. So why some are not good enough, but people that have some kind of a, a, a problem, maybe time of their leg, whatever, the way they build the pedestrian be difficult for them. But nevertheless, for your own good, it is always good for you to use pedestrian bridge where source has been made available. It shows that you are observing traffic regulations. If you pay to do that, you are disobeying the rules and regulations. You are one of the problems caused to the lack of rule and law and order in the society. As a matter of fact, there are many other characteristics of a society observing law and order, but this is where I'm going to stop today. And I want to take question from you. Thank you. This question time. Michael Taylor, I hope you don't want to ask me a question on what I thought before you come online. I will not attend to it. Come late. Class is starts 3 p.m. Some of you are coming 3 15, 3 20. Yes. Any question? I believe you see there's, there's no difficulty in this topic. Okay, that is why there's no question. Okay, in absence of question, uh, maybe I should ask one or two questions. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. You come late today. You happen to be one of the first set of students that come to my class. You slept right on your network. Okay, you can message me. Oh, uh, what am I going to ask question here? Grace. My number one question goes to you. And the number one question is that. Can you tell me one consequences of lack of law and order in a society? Or absence of law and order is there one consequences? Is it your network? There will not be peaceful. There will not be peaceful coexistence, okay. Okay, it's just a logic. Thank you. It's just a logic. Uh, Joshua, you are cited. I will, I will listen to you. It's just a logic. If you know the characteristics, you will be able to what? Identify the consequence. Yes, Joshua. Absence of law and other work. There will be anarchy. Thank you very much. There will be anarchy. Thank you. There will be anarchy. What do you, everybody take the law into use of our hand? Yes, Jessica. Sir, you raise your hand. Oh, is it for the last question? Yes, yeah, the question. Okay, do you. Oh, good. The, the environment will be nice. There will be no peace. The environment will be what? Your network is fluctuating. I couldn't hear you because your network is blocked. Uh, Michael. Michael. So I mute you. I unmuted you. You mute yourself. Okay, thank you. All right. God willing, by God's grace, we will meet on Friday. To do justice to the remaining parts of the topic. Okay. For those of that are sent messages, I was not actually expecting messages. I was expecting your response verbally here. So, uh, the middle said there will be accident, yes, because people will not follow traffic rules, yes. Then there will, if there's accident. That can lead to loss of lives and property. You said, Omoto, so your question, what is your question? Okay, 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 thank you very much. Omoto, so I've seen it, no problem. Okay, so where there's no law and order, 
bad leadership, lack of dividend of democracy, as a matter of fact, loss of life and property, insecurities, and many others will characterize the society.